Learn at Lunchtime uh, will be every Friday at 1215. This is a weekly free program. We're going to do lots of different topics, um, all different programs uh, about Pennsylvania. To sign up for upcoming webinars, visit this website on the screen. Now, if you're interested in art, our next artist conversation, uh, Amy Hammond and Jason Wilson will discuss Violet Oakley's paintings in the governor's reception room of the Capitol. And now I would like to turn it over to our museum director, Beth Hager. Thank you, Sherry. And good afternoon and thank you to everyone who's joining us today for this first program in our new virtual Learn at Lunchtime series. We started Learn at Lunchtime programs in our galleries on summer Fridays back in 2012 to offer the opportunity to meet, interact with our curators, educators, volunteers, and other experts in the community. Now, since we continue to be closed due to the pandemic, we'd like to again connect with you weekly in 2021. As Sherry mentioned, each Friday, our staff will bring you Pennsylvania's stories and treasures featuring a variety of special guests and colleagues. Later, Sherry will tell you more about upcoming programs. And I'd like to welcome you to join us for as many as you can. There's something for everyone. I'd also like to express my gratitude to our staff for their expertise and resourcefulness in creating these special dialogues and presentations. We really look forward to reopening the museum's doors, welcoming you back and offering Learn at Lunchtime in person. But in the meantime, grab your sandwich and enjoy virtually and be ready to ask questions in the chat feature. I'm pleased now to introduce State Museum Fine Art Curator Amy Hammond to kick off this series. She's got a great special guest today and an artist conversations program. And by the way, as Sherry said, you'll see Amy with new guests each first Friday of the month um, of our Learn at Lunchtime series. Thank you so much, Amy, and I'll send it over to you. Hello and welcome to our very first artist conversation focused on artists and work in the fine art collection. This program provides me the opportunity to learn about work from the source, the artist himself, celebrate Pennsylvania's enormously talented artists and share the collection. Today, I am honored to be speaking with Ron Tarver. Ron earned a BA in journalism and graphic arts from Northeastern State University and an MFA from the University of the Arts. He serves as visiting assistant professor of studio art specializing in photography at Swarthmore College. Before Swarthmore, he was a photojournalist at the Philadelphia Inquirer for 32 years where he shares a 2012 Pulitzer Prize for his work on a series documenting school violence in the Philadelphia public school system. He is co-author of the book, We Were There, Voices of African-American Veterans, published by HarperCollins in 2004, which was accompanied by a traveling exhibition that debuted at the National Constitution Center in Philadelphia. Ron has distinguished himself in the field of fine art photography. A recipient of the prestigious Pew Fellowship of the Arts, he has also received grants from the National Endowment for the Arts, the Pennsylvania Council on the Arts, and two independent foundation fellowships. His work has been exhibited nationally and internationally in over 30 solo and 50 group exhibitions and is included in many collections, including the Philadelphia Museum of Art, Studio Museum in Harlem, and the National Museum of American Art at the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, DC. In 2020, his current project, An Overdue Conversation with My Father, was awarded a solo exhibit during the 94th Annual International Competition at the Prince Center in Philadelphia. And welcome, Ron. Thank you for joining us yeah, today. Thanks, glad to be here. And I wanted to begin by asking, how were you introduced to photography? Uh, well, my dad actually uh, dabbled in photography and had a small photo studio when I was growing up. And uh, so I guess that was my first introduction to it. And, um, you know, it just, um, just sort of stuck. I mean, I was, I'm kind of a science geek in a little bit of a way and and uh my mom was more of an artist type so and my dad was sort of a techno geek so the, you know it was just sort of the merging of those two things uh that created photography so and I just fell in love with it and been doing it ever since 
And uh, throughout your career, was there a specific moment in time that signified your switch between photojournalism and fine art photography, or have they always been intertwined? Yeah, no, I mean, I started my career as a photojournalist. I mean, that's what um, I was, you know, interested in and still interested in. Um, I mean, I uh, got my degree in journalism um, and went to work for a small newspaper right out of college and then went to went for a medium sized newspaper and then came to the, to the Inquirer in 1983. So, you know, I, I didn't really even know much about fine art, fine art, anything really. I mean, because my, you know, I've been so steeped in journalism, but um, I guess around the mid nineties or so the uh, paper, um, it, it just became more difficult to do the type of long form for, uh, photojournalism that, that I like doing, you know, like for the Inquirer City Magazine is in particular, where we would do have lots of time to work on long projects. Magazine went away, um, the paper started to lose money and, and it, 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 I don't know, the spark for photojournalism just, I wouldn't say it left, but it, it, got, it got diminished a little bit. So I started thinking about more how could I, what could I do with my photography? And so um, um, this series, this Our, Our Town series that Vinted Vin 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 Steam is part of sprang from that because I was just looking for another way to, um, to, to do photography, but not necessarily in, 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 uh, in, in sort of the photojournalism stream. Um, and that that series was created because I was working the night shift at the Inquirer. So I was driving around a lot at night and noticing different things. And I, I had just started, um, I had bought a four by five camera and I was starting to dabble with that. And so I thought, well, yeah, let me take it out and see what can happen. And, um, and then this series, it was a, gig a gigantic accident that this series even happened, but it, <laughs> it, it happened. So, you know, that's, that's the best thing about art, you know, those happy accidents. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, well, as you know, as you mentioned, uh, our photograph Fenton Steam is part of the Our, Our Town series. And what themes were you exploring throughout the series? Um, I was mainly exploring what it is to be just in the city at night. I, I had uh, started to study the, the pictorialist and, um, and uh, especially uh, Versailles and uh, Paris at Night, that series, I was really captivated by that. And, um, and so I started, you know, I was shooting these things and it, what they didn't, they weren't supposed to be, they weren't supposed to be what they are now. They were, I, I was, they were large format, four by five uh, images, but I had an accident in the dark room one day. And um, actually, let me, let me share my screen and I can show you what I'm talking about here. Um, so there's vented steam. Um, the reason they're soft like this, and maybe this could be a little bit of uh, resolution too. I'm not sure I picked the highest resolution image, but um, the reason they, they came out this way, I was printing everything on uh, fiber-based paper. They were 20 by 24. I was doing it in the dark room at the Inquirer and um, uh, I, I had put the paper in the enlarger and then I put it in the, um, I thought I'd put it in the right side up, the emulsion side up was the way it should be, but I put it in upside down and stuck it in the developer and I don't know, the phone rang or something distracted me. I came back in and this, the image that came up had this really warm feel to it, this sort of out of focus, focused but out of focus look to it. And I thought, you know, I really, I was really intrigued by that. So I started experimenting with that and, um, and uh, sort of arrived arrived upon this technique for printing these things where the paper is, is upside down and the enlarger is instead of right side up. And, uh, and then I started experimenting with developer and different types of developer to get these, you know, really sort of black looks to them, the, that inky black look to it. Um, I was looking at uh, some uh, uh, Philadelphia uh, artists at the time that worked in charcoal and uh, really got, so I fell in love with that really black charcoal look and um and then i wanted a warmth to it and i didn't want to use a a a, a um, toner that actually alters the silvers i wanted to use something that would leave the silvers alone but just add sort of a warm glow to it so um i arrived up on coffee so i started staining everything in coffee 
and then um, uh, making sure that the uh, pH level was 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 taken care of because coffee is really uh, acid. So um, so that's why these things happen. You know, they they all um, sort of came about just pure accident. And after decades of, of photographing Philadelphia's people, did you did you miss having people in your photographs? No, <laughs> <laughs> not that I have anything against people. Although COVID has really made me question that, but no, just kidding. Um, you know, I mean, you spend 25 years or so photographing people and, you know, it's, I mean, I, I still love that, but there's something about the landscape that I really love too. And, and uh, this project made me see a side of Philadelphia that I, that I wouldn't normal, normally see, which is also something that I wanted, I wanted to share with my audience is that Philadelphia is, is sort of a, you know, and I suppose you could say this about any city, but it, there are these places in it that are just really haunting if you, if you sit back and you think about them, you know, and the camera allows you to see things that the normal eye can't see just because, you know, the camera doesn't have that dynamic range that we have in our, in our eyeballs. So it, it drops out things. And that's what I really loved about this project, especially if, you know, if you go back to Vented Steam, um, this actually doesn't, this building's not here anymore. I think it's a uh, high rise now because this area over around uh, Calla Hill, actually my, my son lives over just across the street from this. Um, this was a, a Black & Decker um, rehab store where you could take your Black & Decker tools in. And um, they uh, they would put the, you know, put the, one of these standpipes out during the winter so you so you wouldn't walk through the steam. And there was something about this is sort of, it sort of reminded me of sort of a, a hopper scene. And, um, and I was also studying, studying his work too. And um, I just, I just, you know, love this scene. All these images are really long exposures. There's some of them are up to 45 minutes long. So these are not just snapshots. I mean, I would have set my camera up on a tripod and then stand out in the cold and shiver for a while before I, you know, got a good, got a good image. Um, and it was all just hit or miss because you couldn't, you could, I couldn't use a light meter. It was all just, you know, uh, basically, guessing on the exposure and I, my 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 uh job was just to get a negative that i could at least take in the dark room and make a print from so that's the way these came about if it was overexposed it was one thing if it was underexposed rarely did i get just a spot on image i mean i had to do a lot of dark room work there's no digital manipulation in this this is all chemical chemical uh chemical work so um but yeah so that that's that's where these happen you know it was it was um um, I mean, every, there's a story behind every single one of these that I won't go into, but, um, but I remember these to the day, to the second it happened. Um, um, this little building's not there anymore either. This was a little, uh, I guess a little police guard shack on uh, what used to be called West River Drive, now Kelly Drive. Um, and I wanted to photograph this and a little, really briefly, I, 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 I had my camera set up on a, on a hill or the side, there's, if you know that area, there's a sort of a, an embankment there that leads up to Laurel Hill Cemetery. And I was up on that hill and a, a, a wrecker, a, a, a car tow um, truck came through and it turned its light, it looked up and the guy yelled at me, said, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, but don't turn your lights on. And so he turned his lights on and he went right through the frame. And he walked up to my car and I, and I was literally wedged into the side of the hill. I couldn't get out. My tripod, I was just wrapped around my tripod. I'm making this exposure. I'm thinking, oh man, I just ruined like, wasted like 30 minutes of my life on this coal hill because this guy drove through my, my scene. And then he turned around and drove back through it. And I just said, forget it, you know? So I went back to the, to the uh, dark room and, and processed it. And it was, it, it just, that those lights just added something to the, to the scene, I think. So really a completely different way to see the city you know I, I mean i imagine people who drive by these places all the time probably see these photographs and it just seems like a, an entirely new world mm -hmm. yeah i mean you, you're not gonna it's just like ansel adams i mean not that i'm comparing myself to ansel adams but if you got to yosemite or you go to half dome or you go to you know Mer moonrise hernandez the places that he shot these images you're not going to see an ansel adams photo that Mm -hmm. image only exists 
through the lens of Ansel Adams, you know? So, which I think is one of the amazing and marvelous things about photography is that it's the way the camera sees, is how you position yourself and what you make the exposure as. And then what, if you go into the dark room and nowadays, you know, if you go into digital manipulation, sometimes I think images are a little too manipulated because digital just gives you too many buttons to play with. But, mm -hmm. you know, you, yeah, you're not gonna see these. You're not gonna see, uh, well, I'll show you one more real quick. So this one was in North Philadelphia and I'd been in an assignment in North Philly and um, there was a man, there were, it was kind of, this was kind of a warm night and there were some people out having a beer. Um, this the man that it was a guard, this was a garden. Uh, the, the man's name was uh, uh, Mr. Pabone. And so um, I, I came back after, after my shift was over and I said, do you mind if I, would you mind if I took a picture of your, of your setup here? And he said, sure. And so I pulled out my camera and I think he thought I was just gonna bring out a little point and shoot thing. And I pull out my camera, set it up and turn it on. And then I'm just sitting there and, every, and they, they're all speaking Spanish. I said, what is this guy doing? <laughs> and so I said, it's gonna work out. Don't worry about it. It's, this is legit. So I went back, made the print and then I took the print back to him a day or two later. And he was just amazed because this does not look this way at all. I mean, you know, it was kind of a hazy night and the sky picked up all the reflections from the um, the city in the background and just illuminated the sky. So you know this this only exists in this in this this view only exists in this uh, in it, through this print. And how is the process involved in this series? Uh, the process that you use to make them. How is that important to the message that you're sending? Uh, I think it's. You know, I've, I mean, I did this these back in the, in the '90s, so I'm not I'm not I'm not really working with this anymore. But um, but I think it adds a a sense of poetry, a sort of a poetic feel to um, to the place. Um, I did a series in this using this technique in, in Havana. That if you go to my website, um, you can see it. It was called. Um, uh, uh, geez, I forgot what it was called. It, just look up Havana. <laughs> but I did a whole, I spent a month in Havana um, uh, making making images for um, for um, the Sandy Webster Gallery where, where, the, where it was shown. And, um, and the, the person that offered to pay for this wanted to have somebody go down and photograph Havana in color with the bright cars and all that, and um, and I and I said, well, you know, I would I would love to go to Havana, but I don't want to shoot it in color. I want to shoot it only at night, and I don't want to show any people. So it was the complete opposite of what he did. But he but he uh, he agreed to do it, and so we went down. My wife and I went down. He paid for two trips, and we spent a whole whole month there photographing at night, Havana at night. And I think it just led it it's it gave the Havana sort of this poetic feel because the city's mm -hmm. beautiful. I mean, it, it's mm -hmm. beautiful and it's decaying all at the same time. So I wanted to, mm -hmm. I wanted to enhance that through this, through this work. What is it that draws you to black and white photography specifically? You know, I, I grew up with black and white. I mean, I just love black and white. I mean, I've, I've done projects in color. Um, some of the, the project I'm working on now, some are in black and white, some in color. Um, but I think there's something about black and white that uh, I think there have been studies on it where, you know, color, your brain has to work harder to look at the image if it's in color. And black and white simplifies that viewing process, in, in my opinion. I think it, it, it distills down just the blacks and whites and lets you look at the form and you know, just the basic, the, the design of the image. I really love the, I love putting design in my, in my work. And I think it, it, mm -hmm. it gives you a chance to focus on the design of it. So um, yeah, that, that's what I love about black and white. I mean, not, you know, not that I have anything to, uh, against color, but um, I think there's a place for both uh, processes. Well, um, you've explored so many facets of photography from historic to futuristic, traditional processes and into the third dimension. Is there anything that still surprises you? Yeah, I'm constantly surprised. I'm con I'm, uh, I know we have maybe a couple of minutes. I'll just show you some of the work that I'm doing now. I mean, I, you never know where, uh, at least 
in my experience, I never know where my photography is going to take me. And uh, the, I, I would not have in a million years guessed that it's taken me to this point. So um, oh, I didn't show these. These are some other shots from that series. But what I'm doing now, I'm working with images from my, from my father, who, who, was a, who was a photographer. And uh, I'm looking at his period um, back in the 40s and 50s when he made these images and thinking about um, just the, the, the social climate at that time. And so I want to make images using his images that respond to the social climate now. And so um, I took this image of, from, his, from his archive and I made this image. Um, this is a, actually, it's a laser burned image uh, into brown paper. I call this a test and what it does, it comments on um, the uh, brown bag test that um, African-Americans were subject to back in the 40s and 50s, where if you had a lighter, lighter color skin, you were, achieved a certain level of status in, in, in society. Um, I took this image of this woman and I made this picture and actually it's, it's, this is more of a, uh, I, it's a large scale composition, I guess it's like 53 inches long. Um, but I wanted to pay homage to, um, black women because black women are the backbone of, 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 of African-American society. And I, you know, I pay homage to my mother through this image. Uh, but I wanted to put it in uh, one of those little curio uh, frames, but enlarge it. So this is enlarged. Um, you can see the back of it there, and it sits on the floor. But it, um, but it sort of pays homage to, uh, you know, black women in the in the photos that would sit on the desk of, like my mother had a bunch of these on her uh, dresser, things like that. So, you know, and there's there's a bunch more to this series. I don't think there's any more in here, but. Um, there's a bunch more of this series. You can see it on my on, on my website. But I, like I said, I would have never thought that my photography would have taken me in the direction it's going now. So it's just one of those things that you just hang on to the straps and see where the camera's going to take you. <laughs> <laughs> and this was so, your. So um, I just wanted to pipe in to tell you guys to watch Time. It's been such a great conversation. But um, I know Ron um, only about ten minutes. Okay. So I think we've kind of gone okay. through everything. So this is a good time for question and answers. Um, of course, we've all got great things. We did post uh, your Havana work uh, in the page here. Um, one question was, um, are you familiar with Lynn Seville's work um, and her recent work with uh, Color in Dark City? You know, I've heard her name and I'm going to write it down now and look it up. I, I, her, I don't. I can't recall her work right now, but no, I, I don't know. But I actually, I, 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 have, I know her name and I don't know why, but yeah. I have to look it up. Yeah, it'll be interesting to do some comparisons on that. Um, lots of people love you. The Swarthmore campus is giving you kudos here. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, one person, I, I love this comment when they were looking at your beginning ones, uh, said it reminded them from when they were living in Brooklyn, New York, uh, in the neighborhoods of the 60s and 70s. It really felt them feel re reminiscent about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, that, I think that's one of the one of the nice things about that work. I mean, this could be any city anywhere, really, when you think about it, you know, but, then, you know, going back to the idea of what black and white does, I mean, black and white. It, 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 it reveals and it exposes. And I think that it, it uh, I'm sorry, it reveals and it hides certain parts of a scene. So this, um, you know, this work, you know, there's, there's parts of this work that really could, could have been shot anywhere, so. We've got a question here. Um, is there any aspect of black culture you haven't done uh, currently, but you would love to explore? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm sure there is. I mean, you know, over the years, I mean, I, I, I spent a lot, well, my whole career for the most part was in Philadelphia looking at the Black community. And, you know, the, the work that I'm, that I really want to go back and re-explore is uh, I did a big series on Black cowboys. And that topic has become mm -hmm. really huge lately. Um, the Studio Museum collected some images from that 
from that from those images. And I would really like to do a book on that. And uh, you know, I've, I've gotten a lot of requests to do a book. So that's one thing I really want to do. And in fact, last year I I had planned to go down and look up some of the cowboys and cow women girls that I had photographed um, uh, back, you know, 25 years ago. Um, and, uh, but, you know, COVID sort of put a damper on that. So I'm hoping once I can get back out, I'd like to go back down and, and uh, find some of these folks that I photographed and, and really sort of, you know, catch up with, with, with what's happened there. So, I mean, this is all over the country too. So it'd be a big yeah. project, but yeah. Well, somebody has the same question that I was curious about too. Um, are you still doing darkroom work or have you completely changed the digital? Hmm. I have a dark room. <laughs> I have one. In, <laughs> I have one in my basement. My my wife has been bugging me because I sold one of her prints and I just didn't want to. I'd given her a print and man, I hope she doesn't hear this. But um, yeah, so I'm going to have to go back to the dark room. So yeah, I mean, I have not given up on the dark room. I, I still have a fully functioning dark room. We have a we have a small dark room at school, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, you know, I'd I'd, I'd I'd love to to get back down there. I you know, digital really makes you kind of lazy though. I mean, it's it's so easy to you know put the picture in light in Lightroom and hit a couple of buttons and but it's not the same thing. And I keep telling myself, you know, it's not. I'm be, I'm being seduced to the dark side. Mm -hmm. by going to digital so um so yeah i mean i really would like to get back to, to the dark room what kind of cameras are you using right now i just bought last year a um a um nikon z1 um which is a it gives you a super gigantic file size so i use that in the work that i'm doing now because what i do now is i build these constructions and then i re-photograph them so I wanted something that would give me this really nice large file that I could blow up large if I if I needed to. So that's the camera that I'm using now. Um, you know, to be honest, the camera that I use most is my cell phone. I mean, I use my cell phone, if not daily, you know, nearly every other day because you know I have an Instagram post that I'll post to occasionally and. Um, tons of pictures of the dog you know but <laughs> yeah but they you know the, the 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 camera on your cell phone is just it's an amazing thing and it, it's it's really it's 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 reordered the way that we think about photography both in a, in a in a social justice way in particular and just in our daily lives you know like i know i take pictures just so um the image will will be in the memory of my of my of my camera and uh you know, I'll get a reminder, this happened six months ago, or this happened a year ago, you know, it's, it's kind of fun that way. I don't really have to think about it. But yeah. Have you documented COVID at all? Or anything going on with that? No, I haven't, you know, and um, I had I had to have, a, I, I had a knee surgery actually last year, and it kind of put a damper on my mobility for a while. So I haven't really done anything with COVID, and uh, you know when all the when all the craziness was going on last year, I was I was just biting my teeth because I really wanted to be out there in, in the midst of the the riots and the and the uh, protest and things like that because I you know I just I mean that's what I did you know if I had been at the Enquirer I would have been there and then that was mm -hmm. that has been really difficult. So short answer is no, I have not done anything with COVID, although my students have that have done some amazing things. We had, we had a great project last year where they, they, doc, they we did a book on it actually, where they documented um, their experiences with, with uh, the quarantine um, that, yeah, it was really, I'm really proud of the work they did. I'm going to kind of sum two questions up in the same thing where we had we have some young people on here. We've got some kids that ages eight and 10 and mm -hmm. um, kind of combining a two part here. Um, what was your first image in your first show? Oh, wow. My first picture. My first picture? Uh, my first picture, my very, very, very first picture was, I remember I had a friend and we set out on uh, a, his porch or a neighbor's porch and made pictures of cars with a Kodak Instamatic. And uh, so that was my first picture. <laughs> <laughs> my first picture of any, of any uh, significance was... Uh, I did a photo of a um, ballerina uh, that um, I think I made that when I was 17, when I was intern at the, at the Muskogee Daily Phoenix and that picture ran on the front page. But that picture really made me understand what light was. Um, 
and uh, always and when I do slideshows, I start off with that image because you know that image is. I don't think I've ever made another image like that since. And um, so yeah, so I you know there there's there's been a few of my earlier images that I could say were really sort of groundbreaking for me. Got a couple of people interested in your black cowboys. So you do that in Oklahoma, right? Well, I did, it, I did it everywhere. Actually, it started in Philly. I started in Philly. It ran in the Sunny Magazine. And then um, I got a lot of email from, from, from uh, readers of the magazine. And um, I um, asked my editors if we could go out and if I could go out and do a larger series for the, uh, for the, for the newspaper during Black History Month. So they, they gave me um, a little rain to go out and find stories across the country. So it went from Texas to Illinois to California to Oklahoma to uh, some places in the in the South. I mean, it, it just went all over the place. And I found found five stories that that ran in ran in the uh, city Ma and ran in the broadsheet paper during uh, during uh, Black History Month. And I think that was like nineteen ninety six or something in there ninety four five somewhere in there um but yeah so no it was it was a very comprehensive look at sort of african-american western life and uh, i still want to do that i mean i like, grew up in oklahoma my, my 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 grandfather was a working cowboy um so i i was really amazed that people at that time didn't know that there were such a thing as a black cowboy so mm -hmm. Well, we got to watch our time here. I know Ron uh, has to bounce. Um, we're going to yeah. stay on here for a second because Amy is going to, I'm going to turn this over to you, Amy, right now. Okay. Well, I'll just want to say goodbye. I wish I could stay longer, but I have uh, another meeting I have to jump on. So yeah. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. All right. See you. So long to Thanks, everybody Ron. that I can't see out there. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Bye. And uh, well, thank you very much, Ron, for joining us. That was uh, was very informative. I love looking at, at the breadth of his work over the decades that he's been a photographer. And I did want to also thank him for, uh, he was served as the photography juror for our Art of the State exhibition uh, in 2020. And I wanted to uh, just make a little announcement that we will be opening our uh, opening our entry site uh, on March 15th. So stay tuned artists for the March 15th opening of the virtual 2021 exhibition. Thank you, Amy and Ron. It was a great program. Um, if you are interested in donating to any of these programs, I'm gonna put a link in the chat box um, that connects us to the Pennsylvania Heritage Foundation. Um, and next week, don't forget, um, we are going to be meeting with our senior curator of zoology and botany, Walter Mashaka, and our nature educator. Um, she's going to be running the second week series. So first week will be art, second week will be nature, third week will be our curators, which the third week will be all about whiskey. Um, looking forward to that one. Uh, the fourth week will um, feature our... Um, perspectives, um, often uh, dealing with our um, director and our head of our education, Jenny Ashton. And our first one, we'll be talking about uh, what are upcoming programs for school groups. Um, so once again, the next art program that's going to be coming up, Amy, on March 5th, we'll be meeting with Jason Wilson, and we're going to be exploring the paintings done by Violet Oakley. Um, once again, thank you for attending. Uh, and everybody have a great weekend.